welcome back to another episode of Let's Go Fishing. I'm Chris Ponsford, and today I've got a real treat for you. We're actually at a spectacular estate lake in late summer, trying to catch that gorgeous fish called the Doctor Fish, Tench. Tench are a fantastic species. They're the most beautiful looking things, and they often have quite a lot of slime on them, which they say they can rub against other fish and it's called the doctor fish, but never mind all that. All I know is they fight like crazy. We're in an amazing location here and it's late summer, going into autumn, quite chilly first thing this morning. The level where I'm actually sat on this stump, I was sat here in chest waders last time. But today I've just got a little pair of wellies on and I'm going to be using simple ledgering tactics with some ground bait which I'll show you later. But I'm going to start off on a method feeder. I'm going to introduce some bait on a regular basis. Hopefully the fish will start bubbling. We'll get all excited and then the rod will pull round and we'll hook a tench and you'll see why I'm here because I love it. So the six million dollar question is what bait we're going to use today? We know we're going to be fishing for tench because that's what this lake is predominantly famous for, really. And we are in a fabulous swim in a fantastic location. So my plan today will be to use a small method feeder and maybe an open end feeder later on. But the ground bait will stay the same. The hook baits will stay the same. We're going to be using pellets on the hook and wafters because there's a huge head of small rudd in here that will, if we used a maggot the maggot wouldn't even get to the bottom before it'd get eaten by the rudd. So we're going to use these hard pellets on a small short hook length on a method feeder. To use a method feeder we need to use a ground bait and some pellets that is quite solid, quite compact that when it will stay on when it's moulded round the feeder and then will release when it hits the bottom. When the fish will knock at it, the ground bait, the bits and pieces in it will start to rise off and as we introduce that feeder several times, more and more feed will be getting to the bottom. We'll be using a clipped up feeder, so in other words the same distance, I'll be casting the same distance each time so the feeder we'll be landing in pretty much the same spot all the time. And over a period of time, the tench will find that bait. And once one finds it, some of his mates will find it too. That's the plan. So what's the bait? So I'm, I'm going to be using some Sonia Bates meaty salmon. This is a half a, a quarter of a packet left over. I've, I've got some more with me, obviously. So we're going to start on the meaty salmon. That's a fish meal based ground bait. Nice heavy mix, fish, tench, bream, love fish meal ground bait. So that will be the basis of the ground bait. I'm also going to use some Super Crush 50-50 method paste ground bait. This is the green version. This is a heavy mix and is actually can be mixed up to use as paste on the hook but I found it fantastic stuff to use as normal ground bait with a couple of additions. So I'm going to use some of that, which I'll add to it. And I'm also going to use some one mil feed pellets. These are absolutely tremendous, but we used to do like four mil and two mil, but now we've been making these one mil pellets and these are terrific because they're very, very fine and you can mix them in with the ground bait. The fish will search them out and they love them. So hook baits, we said we're going to use pellets and we know we're going to use those because of the head of small rudd that would muller any sweet corn, maggot, whatever we chose to put like that. So I brought along some bandom wafters and these ones here, these are hard pellets and we've got a little uh, bayonet spike on the hook, which we can just skewer them on with, and I'll show you how we do that later on. So these are hard pellets, 
and also I am a big fan of these fish meal pro pellets these are like expanders but expanders ready for the hook so no expanding needed they're soft enough to be able to put on the hook they've got loads of attraction built into them and the fish absolutely love them so those are my three baits that I'm going to be using obviously I'm going to get some of the one mil pellets and I'm going to pop these in here probably about half the packet right and this will be the basis of my mix because these mold beautifully around the method feeder so I'm going to not put them all in put quite a few in there cover them in water and swirl them about there so we just give those a bit of water there and then I'm just going to just pour some of that water off I'm going to leave a bit in there because I actually want some for ground bait so we've got nice two mil, one mil pellets I'm now going to get some of this 50-50 method paste which is a heavy one and I'm going to add some of that there and you can see it's nice and dark it's a nice green colour it's got lots of lots of crushed pellets in this one and it's a heavy mix so I'm not going to put it all in there but I'll just mix that to there and I'm just literally going to swish that together like that and that is predominantly that's the 50 50 paste mix and the one mil pellets now at the moment that's really wet so now that that's absorbing the water and it's not quite ready yet I'm actually going to add a little bit of this meaty salmon ground bait which is a red colored ground bait and that goes very nicely in with it it'll change the color ever so slightly and I'll do exactly the same as I did before just give that a little mix around and already I can feel the water has been absorbed and it's getting quite a stiff consistency so I'm just using my hands and it gets almost like a clayey consistency but we can adjust that according to it but the main thing is with a method mix we want it to stay on the feeder so it's important that it is a heavy consistency and all those little pellets that's what the fish are going to be seeking out in a minute and all the other little bits in the ground mate so again i'm going to leave that now to absorb a bit more and come back to that in a bit Perfect. Right, so I'm going to pick a little spot. We're in, we're in. tension these fish always fight very hard so he's coming towards me and sometimes that can be deceptive they can be bigger than you think oh rod bending beautifully the rod up on him keep his head up so we don't want him to bury himself in the weed oh, what's not to like about catching tench oh it's coming closer and closer it's quite deep water under the rod end actually here look there's a big swirl that is the first one look at that look at that look at that there we go way isn't that oh he says i've still got a bit of kick left in me goodness me well what's not to like about catching a nice tench in the autumn you can even hear the seven valley railway behind me goodness me look at that look it's even unhooked himself because on barbless hooks look at that then isn't that lovely are we happy with that or what fantastic look at the colors on that it's not a monster but look at the great big fins on it look at the colors look at the big red eye they're famous for the red eye and if you look there you see how big the tail is on these fish very powerful fish that's a lovely start i think we'll slip this one back shall we
go. Oh, there's another one. It's getting pretty lively, even though the sun's right out here. Oh, you have a big splash there. See that? Oh, amazing. Oh, I don't think it gets any better than this. I know last time we caught you some lovely chub, but today catching you some lovely tench on an estate lake at the end of the summer is absolutely amazing. So where's my landing net? Here he comes. He says, I'm uh, just going to come in now. Boom. I've, tried, I've tried this yellow wafter. Oh, I'll tell you what, they absolutely love it. Whether it's the colour, I don't know. But uh, look at that, another gorgeous looking fish. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Isn't, that. isn't that a fabulous fish to catch? Late season tench. Earlier in the year, they were all, lots of spawn in them, but now they're sort of natural fighting weight, really. And uh, looking fantastic, amazing colours. Well, we've had a bit of fun with that one. So uh, let's get him back, shall we? Okay, we're going to cast this one out, aiming towards that tree. Just clipped it up a bit, that's hit the clip. I'll just bury the rod underneath the water, that sinks the line. And it's still sinking. And then I'm just going to pop that on there. Isn't it great that we can uh, get out before autumn? The weather's still warm. We've got this lovely breeze on the water. And here we are, catching tench in the sun. So we haven't had to get here at dawn. No misty dawns for us this morning. But yeah, we're gradually turning into autumn now. The leaves will be starting to turn soon. The water's lovely and clear. The weed's dying back a bit, actually, because this can get very weedy here earlier in the year. But actually, at the moment, although we're getting some weed, it's not a major problem. Yeah, the old Seven Valley in the background there, you hear a long whistle on the steam train. It's not far away, the Seven Valley. Well, we're right in the Seven Valley. Oh, oh, I've got a bike going on, got a bike going on. Come on, come on, come on. Take it away, take it away. Yeah, I'm on. And again, pull round nicely. Come here, come here, come here, come on. Come on up. Come on up. Got to give them a little bit of a little bit of stick because they know where the weeds are. And they get in those weeds, they can be a bit of a nightmare. But this one's so far so good. Oh, we're having a good morning now. It's starting to uh, get better and better. Wow. Oh. Big boils, there's his big tails, you see, just back winding ever so slightly on this one. They are strong fish. Oh my goodness, he's getting a second wind. All right, we stop now, so we're pulling back towards me. Using, using the bend in the rod there, so to absorb the lunges. Oh, well, be prepared to back wind though, because he goes powering off again. Powerful fish tench. That's why people love catching them. And they look amazing, don't they? Look, oh, there he goes. He says, oh, I'm not, I don't like that sunshine, he says. I want to keep staying in my, uh, my, my lake, he says. I don't want to come out and see you, Ponzi. Here we go. Give him a little pull, that's it. Ooh. Isn't this amazing location? That beautiful boathouse in the background there. It's, it's iconic. That's the word, iconic. Yes, it is absolutely iconic. This is the perfect place to come and catch tench. Get my net. There we go. On that yellow one again. Whoa, that's another one. We're not retaining any in any keep nets today. The water's hot. And uh, the club has very wisely said, no retention of fishing keep nets. So we unhook them. Have a little look and pop them back. Well, this one's done lovely for us, isn't it? So uh, let's get this baby back, shall we? There we go. Oh, the bubbles out there now, lots of bubbles. Classic tench bubbles. We're right in that area where the tench bubbles are. That's 
sometimes you get by it very quickly. Let's see what happens. Another another misnomer sometimes with tents say you've got to you've got to be here in the crack of dawn. Well, we didn't get here. We didn't start fishing probably till I don't know nine o'clock, half nine. So we weren't particularly early. So yeah, that suits me. We can hopefully catch a few more and then go home for our tea. But just being here in the sunshine in the autumn, what well, sunny autumn weather really is just magnificent. I'm seeing people walking around now. Just a lovely house up in the distance there. And we're sat here catching fish and as far as I know there's only one other gentleman on the lake. Isn't that great? You think of some of the places you go, they're absolutely rammed with anglers aren't they? And here we are. Just me, just little old me and one other gentleman. Yeah, there's fish out there, but they've just, just been a bit cagey at the moment. I might have to have a recast in a minute, get a bit more bait out there. Huh? Oh, again, a slow pull on the tip, but that's more line bite, that is. A bit like when you're bream fishing, you know, you've got to, you've got to sit on your hands. Look at that, look at that. Look. That's on, though. That one's on. Oh, yes. That one's on. Oh my goodness me, yes, that one's definitely on. So it all developed very, very nicely. Uh, so I'm on a clip, so I'm trying to get this fish, get some line back on the reel. So I'm keeping good hard pressure on it. That's it, lifting the rod tip right up. That's it, that's it. Get a few turns on the reel. That's it, now. We're away from the danger area. Get a little clutch going there. I've just got that clutch set so it just does give a little line when it's extreme pulling. As you can see, we know how powerful these fish are. But they're not ones to give up easily. Coming towards us now. So we've, we've got the worst of it now. We've got plenty of line back on the reel. That's it. And he's down here now. I just keep that rod tip up and you can see it absorbing all the, all the lunges. Pull it back up again, bending beautifully. This is actually the first time I've used this particular rod. I must admit, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Got my Centris reel on. This is the uh, Centris 420. Preston Centris, fantastic reels. I've got a set of these. Use them for everything, pretty much. And six pound line on the reel. Some six pound Preston's line. Here we go. Back on the seat. Way. Woohoo. Look at that. Another lovely fish. Wow. Isn't that great? Just rest him in the net a second. Well, I reckon. I think this one's the best one I've caught today. This looks an absolute beauty. So I'm going to pop this one back. It's a scrap tart. This one just down in the water here. Look at that. Oh, lovely enough. Another lovely fish. Wow. Keep his head up, trying to keep him out of the weeds. They don't give up easily, do they? Oh, here he comes. Look, he's nearly he's coming my way now. Let's get my landing net handy. Here he goes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. See the wafter in the top? Whee, that's it. Looks like the fish are getting bigger, actually. They do look like they're getting bigger. Out the water, a little bit of air. We can pull him towards. Oh no, he says not quite ready. Not quite ready. Now, maybe this time. 
maybe this time. No, he's still not quite ready. Here we go. Pull him towards me. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. That's it. He's in the net. Oh, great stuff. What a lovely fish. They're getting bigger, aren't they? Look at that one. Look at that. Wow. Wow. He wants to go back, doesn't he? So I'm just going to uh, put a little wafter on, and this one's a little bayonet spike on this one. So it's like a little metal spike, which is absolutely fantastic. So there's no fiddling about with bait stops and things like that. You literally push it into the uh, into the wafter and just screw it on, and then the jobs are good. In. And there, as you can see, it's nicely buried. Wow, and I hooked he didn't feel too big, but if he's sort of got some go in him, hasn't he? He's got some go, and I'm just supporting the rod with my left hand. That lovely action on this rod, beautiful. Really absorbing those lunges. Oh, here he comes. He's on the top now. Now, this is the time it's easy to just keep him on the top, and then just, that's it, job done. He's in the net. Another one bites the dust. This is absolutely splendid. It's one of the best ones I've caught today. Look at that. Look at the colours on that. Isn't that beautiful? That is, that is what we've come here for today. Oh, look at that. Sun glinting on it. See that big red eye? See that great big tail? Beautiful colours on that, isn't it? Pretty pleased with that one. And here we are right in the middle of the day. It's about half past one in the afternoon. Bright sun, hot but still we're catching them. We're having a great day. I'm gonna pop him straight back into the water. Here he goes, you see, it's a gulp of air. Just pop him into the water, and away he goes. Oh, away he goes strongly. So I thought I fancy a little change really, see if I can catch a few on this uh, open end feeder. So what I've done, I've just literally tied a loop in the end of my line here, and I've just looped it over like so. So now that feeder's hanging there, this is a, uh, this is a little 30 gram, one ounce feeder, open end feeder, it's a little corum feeder. And uh, so I've got that on literally on a loop. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this around. So I'm actually gonna put another little loop here. I'm gonna tie this above. And the idea is, I will then put some line onto that and then I'll put my hook length on. So, so I've now got a feeder with a loop and that is what I will tie the hook length to and the idea is I'll have a longer hook length here than I was using before and then the fish can pull it away and this will be work exactly like a method feeder but instead of the very short hook length I'll be using a slightly longer one. So now I'm going to get some um, 019 power line okay which is quite strong stuff, as you can see there. Just dump a bit of that off. I'll make another loop in that one there. And I'll go loop to loop. There's a little loop there. Just nip them off with my razor sharp teeth. Get my loop above the feeder thread that through the other loop so now we have a feeder and a length of line there now I have a plan I'm going to use the same hooks as I was using before so I'm going to make an yet another little loop this time in the end of this piece here which I will attach my pre-tied hook on the bayonet. So there we are. That is now ready to have the actual hook plank. So we've got the feeder, a loop and a loop on the end there. And then all I need to do then is I just get one of these pre-tied hook lengths. These are the Preston's ones, which I've been using. And this one here, this is 021, 
So that's quite strong. So a size 12 KKH hook. And on the end of that hook is a, ba is a bayonet. So I'm just threading that through the loop there. And now we are good to go. So there's the hook. There's the bayonet just there. Then as we can see, the difference is the hook length now is quite a bit longer than we had before. But that won't make any difference. And they'll still, they'll, when you get a bite, it'll pull off the top there and it'll register on the rod tip. So that's a fairly simple open end feeder setup utilizing the same hook as we used before with the bayonet, which we'll put our little pellet or wafter on. Well, we got a tench and he just got me in the weed just now. Oh my goodness me, and I've changed to an open end feeder now. And uh, yeah, just to try something a bit different. I had been on the method feeder and he took, there'd be a load of weed around this, but he's going pretty fast now. So he's, he's obviously not impeded. Here he comes, here he comes. He's got the weed off. Put the net ready. There he go. Oh, scrapping hard as they always do. Look at that, there's the feeder, there's the tench, little white wafter in its mouth. Come back by you, come back by you. Here he comes over that. Well done. There you go. That's a, a nice result. Gosh. It's the middle of the afternoon, we're still catching tench. And the sun's gone round, we're sat in the shade here now. I've just caught this one here. So let's uh, pop this one back. Lovely fish. And see if we can catch another. Well, we've had a fabulous day today and um, I'm thinking this could well be our last fish of the day. We caught loads today. And this might be a, a nice one to finish on. They've been really hard fighting fish. And even though it's, well, middle of the afternoon, still they fight, still they bite. And still they don't want to come in too easily. Let's put a weed bed down there. Oh, look, got a bit of weed around him. That usually slows them up a bit. Nearly there, come on. Come on, come on, come on, Mr. Tinker. So many people's favorite fish, these. Nearly there. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, it's a lovely fish. I think we might finish on that one, you know. We've had a fantastic day. Enjoyed the video, hope you've enjoyed it, and, um, Remember to like and subscribe, we'd love that. That'd be very kind of you. And we'll see you on the next one.